Despite the fact that it's been close to a month since Chris Jenkins hit the shot to win the national championship, the high is not worn down for Jay Wright and the Villanova Wildcats. This was true on Wednesday when the Cats returned to the pavilion and were honored by many at their end of the season championship banquet. Hundreds of fans stood on their feet and applauded the national championship game again. However, Jay Wright for the most part seized the event as business as usual. This is always kind of the end of our season uh, where we we just look back and we, we really celebrate the tradition of Villanova basketball. No matter what happens during the season, we're celebrating how fortunate we are to be a part of this because all the alumni come back and and then we celebrate the senior, the senior managers, office workers, and players. That's what this is. So they'll speak at the end of the night, uh, the, the seniors, managers, and, and players, and that's really the highlight of the evening. Senior Ryan Archidiacono is well aware of the fact that the banquet could be the last time the entire team is together as one. Going through three banquets, you never really think that your, your time will come and you'll have to be up there and give your senior speech. So it's definitely going to be it's going to be a tough night, but it's going to be uh, a night we enjoy. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to all the, the more times we'll have together because we know Coach uh, does a great job, and I think you guys just touched upon it, bringing the old teams back of uh, just how they stay connected and you always play for the ones who came before you. So uh, it'll be pretty special watching the guys next year and for years to come just to, to know that they're playing for the, uh, myself and my classmates. For some of the Villanova Wildcats, the next step is figuring out where and when they'll be playing professional basketball. But for most, the next task is simple and daunting, trying to defend their national championship. Here at the Pavilion for Comcast Sportsnet, I'm Tyler Harper. We're not necessarily going Christmas naughty or nice list. Uh, actually, we're actually going to channel our inner Frank Costanza and go with Festivus, the airing of grievances. As Frank Costanza says right there, I got a lot of problems with you people, and now you're going to hear about it. And boy, I'm sure do we have our respective problems with uh, Philly sports this year. So just for multiple reasons. <laughs> so we're at least going to get one grievance in real quick, and someone's going to comment on it. And then just from there, we're going to see how many grievances we can get before the show runs out. So we're going to start with well, I guess me, since I'm hosting this thing. And my grievance is with, well, we just talked about him in the previous segment, LaShawn McCoy. You see right there, Shady playing the role of Scrooge in his return to Philly. Yeah, get used to the bad Christmas jokes. Um, my grievance is, this issue has gone on long enough. I'm sorry, Chip Kelly, he's not a racist. I, I do not subscribe to that theory in the, in the least. He just saw a move on the table. It was a high-risk move, and right now, it doesn't seem like it's paying off that much. But... In regards, I mean, I guess I don't hate Chip for trying the move. Shady's been the one carrying this issue on and on. Of course, after week one, he takes the picture with Todd Harriman and Trent Cole and says, oh, get a picture of the Chip Kelly rejects. Like, dude, stop. Just focus on the game. Focus on your team. And we'll see where it goes. Isaac, what do you think about uh, Scrooge McCoy? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, it has gone on long enough. Um, um, I do know that he felt with disrespected because what Chip didn't talk to him. I understand all that, but like you just said, you know, that was like back in August now. It was back er was earlier than that. Earlier than back, that, I'm sorry. It was yeah, back yeah, in like yeah, March. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm oh, no, I got you. But, but yeah, um, enough is enough. Yeah, yeah, enough's enough. But like, like, you know, you're a big kid, like, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, he's a dad too. That's the funniest part about that. He's a dad and he's setting a great example. Uh, Fleet, real quick, your comments on Scrooge McCoy? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like like you said, it, it's kind of taking his course. But if you think of LaShawn McCoy, he's just he's he, he has a huge ego. You know, he he probably felt like he was the mayor of Philadelphia because you know he he basically carried the team on his back and he produced so well. And you know, he's from Pennsylvania. He's always he played collegiately in Pennsylvania and then he got drafted by the Eagles. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think he wanted to leave. So I think the fact that he had to go to a town like Buffalo, he probably wasn't too thrilled about that. He was he was used to being a big guy on campus in a big city like Philadelphia. So yeah. he was probably just disappointed in that. Andrew Laviolette made his return to the Wells Fargo Center on Saturday, but it wasn't exactly a happy homecoming as the Flyers beat his new team, the Nashville Predators, 3-2 to two in a shootout. Strange to be back in this building? Uh, not really, no. How did you feel about the reception you got earlier? That was nice. Yesterday? The fans have always been great, you know, with me, and uh, that was nice. If shootouts are shootouts. I, I, you know, I... Pick guys and watch. You know, you just, I mean, shut I don't have an answer for that. Sometimes. I don't shut my eyes, but <laughs> I felt good after Jake scored right away, though. You know, um, I, I thought Zepp looked confident, to be honest with you. 
described that last the save there, and boy, look at you. Really enjoyed it. You had a heck of a celebration. Yeah, I might have overdone it a bit, but <laughs> I, I, uh, I just got caught up in the moment. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know you, you make that save and uh, the game's over, and uh, you know it's always fun to make a little glove save there. And uh, I was just pretty excited. The guys battled so hard all night, and I knew how much uh, the two points meant to the team, and uh, just really happy to get those. No, unfortunately, we don't play like that every night, and you know, we, we've got to figure out a way to, to play against to play that way against teams that are below us and you know, around the same as us. But you know, I think we. We just focus in and we, we hone in on kind of what we need to do and, you know, we keep it more simple. We don't try to do anything extra and, you know, it works out. They've come a long ways. i uh, got a long way to go. I mean, um, guys have been resilient, working hard, uh, doing doing a lot of the little things that are needed to do it and we've we've gotten some really good goaltending that's uh, helped us win some games, you know, with Mason out. It'll be no rest for the weary as less than 24 hours later, the Flyers will take to the ice and take on Eastern Conference rival, the Washington Capitals. I'm Tyler Harper for LaSalle TV.